everyone, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. Um, so we're going to talk more about the Madeline Soto case right now. But I first wanted to share this clip from Court TV because we're going to discuss this issue. Comes to mind here, uh, circumstantial evidence and a capital offense. As we know, um, Ron DeSantis has made it a capital offense uh, for any sexual battery crimes for kids uh, under 12. Now, with the situation that we see here, with this drop off, the sort of weekends at Bernie, maybe he propped up someone in the car. He's trying to cover up the steps. And when you try to cover up the steps, you make it worse sometimes. So it seems like the, the uh, prosecutors have no choice but to start building a strong circumstantial evidence case around um, Stephen uh, Stern. And it seems like the timeline is very, very important. So as he's covering it up, it appears that the drop off and pickups are not matching. And also it looks like he's leaving a lot of trace evidence um, leading towards his guilt. But the sad part is that we need to find more direct evidence. If not, the jury's gonna have nothing but a circumstantial evidence case. And it could be strong, but it's really, you want direct evidence over circumstantial if you can. If you can. So in 2011, there was a very, very high profile case in Central Florida involving the unaliven of a child. And, um, and a lot of us had our eye on that. And uh, it didn't go the way we thought it would. And that was the Casey Anthony case. Uh, they really only had a circumstantial evidence. Court for the Ninth Judicial Circuit in and for Orange County, Florida. State of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. As to case number 2008, CF 15606-0. As to the charge of first degree murder, verdict as to count one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty, so say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, on this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated child abuse, verdict as to count two, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, did it at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated manslaughter of a child, verdict as to count three, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, did it at Orlando, Orange County, and that was the, the verdict with circumstantial evidence. Um, she walked, she walked, she just walked, you know? And we all know she did it. it we all know she did it. And I, I understand, you know, that it's not what we know. It's what we can prove in the court of law. And they didn't prove it. They didn't prove it. And um, like Nancy Grace liked to say the, the jury was kooky or whatever. I don't think they were. Because when they were talking about all this evidence they had in the news shows and everything, I was thinking, well, hopefully they have better than that because they're not going to convict on just that. But they didn't have more than, they didn't have anything more than what they were talking about. And uh, they didn't get a conviction. She, uh, it was a death penalty case and um, juries are not going to, Brian, what are you doing? Juries are, are going to be even more meticulous. I mean, not that they're not meticulous, but maybe I'm using the wrong word, but they're going to be very careful in, you know, sending someone, you know, to the electric chair for something that really wasn't proved that they did. We all know she did it, but they didn't prove it. You know what I mean? And, um, so yeah. Personally, I believe Zanny the Nanny was Xanax and it just, it rolled. It went like a snowball and just got bigger and bigger and that lie got out of control. And um, then it involved this, this Zanita lady and everything and it just got out of control. Um, but I believe initially Zanny the Nanny was Xanax because that's what they called Z Xanax when they would unfortunately give it to children and um and she gave gave her too much but it doesn't matter now we will never know and and Kaylee Anthony is never going to get justice 
this adorable little girl is never going to get justice and it's terrible. And um, is this what we want for Madeline Soto? Because I don't think it is. I don't think that's what you want. I, I think we want justice for Madeline Soto. And it's it's likely Stefan Stearns isn't going to walk because of all the um, the current charges of horrible things he's done to Madeline. But he he may get away with the unaliven. He's not going to walk away. He's gonna he's going to prison for life for what he's already done and what they have hard and true evidence for he's he's not getting away with that um maybe uh he's involved with people online in some kind of a trade and is going to make a deal to nail other people maybe but the minimum from what i understand the minimum penalty for capital s abuse of a child under the age of 12 is life in prison so We'll just have to wait and see. Wait till May, but it'll probably be longer. Um, but he may get away with the unaliven of Madeline if all they have is circumstantial evidence. But, you know, there still is a possibility that, that he didn't do it and is covering for somebody. Um, although he doesn't exactly strike me as a hero type, you know. Uh, like, I hate to say it, but you know, it is possible mom did something to Madeline that is entirely possible and that he's covering it up. And, um, and there was some speculation that, well, maybe she ended, ended her life herself, but I don't believe that's true. But, and then people are like, well, if that's true, why would he hide her body? Um, I think because they would have found physical evidence on her of SA. Um, so yeah, he, he's in the crapper no matter what, but we want him flushed. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we, we need to be patient and, and let the police do their job. Because um, the, the prosecution really screwed the pooch on Kaylee Anthony and that whole situation. I mean, they screwed the pooch. They should have they um, asked for more time because they didn't have enough. They did not have enough to prosecute and I think they knew that. I think they knew they weren't gonna they weren't going to win that case. I think they knew that. Um but Central Florida does not want to see that happen again. They don't want another hit like that. Um you know it was in Orange County. This is Orange and Osceola County we're dealing with. I'm not sure if Kissimmee is Orange or Osceola County. Orlando is Orange County. So uh, I'll look that up. Um, now let's talk about the evidence in the Casey Anthony case. And I have articles pulled up because I didn't want to write all these notes down when I can just look at the, reference these articles. <laughs> so, um, and we're just going to go over a few things. So let's, let me nail a few facts out for you first. On July 15, 2008, Cynthia Anthony, mother of Casey Anthony and grandmother of Kaylee Anthony called 911 to report Casey Anthony for stealing a vehicle and money. In another 911 call, Cynthia Anthony shared with the 911 operator that she learned from Casey of Kaylee Anthony's kidnapping. In addition, Cindy reports that her daughter's car smells like there's been a dead body in it. Um, but now let's just go to the evidence. So human hair found in the trunk of Casey Anthony's vehicle. So they were able to do tests to determine that it was human hair, but they could not extract DNA from it because there was no root or, um, or tissue at the end of the hair to, to run DNA on because that's where the DNA would come from. Um, so there was human hair found and they were only able to find out that it was from the Anthony female lineage. So it could have been Casey or Kaylee. Next was a decomposition detection. Um, it was a disputed piece of evidence. Um, it was odor analysis. And at the time that was in its infancy and it wasn't um, accepted by the scientific community and it was admissible, but it wasn't really widely respected or, or again, accepted as, you know, very scientific. So 
they weren't able to really go anywhere with that. Uh, a stained paper towel, um, let's see, a stained paper towel found with large amount of fly pupa was sent for analysis. The cause of the stain was characteristic for adiposere um, profile, also known as grave wax. Adiposere is the breakdown of fat by water in an oxygen-deprived environment. This fact was disputed because the adiposere profile found on the stained paper towel originated from human fat when there are fatty acids, which can result in adiposere, also found in the garbage content of the trunk. So because it was also found in the garbage, um, that adiposere could have been part of the garbage. I hope I said that word right. <laughs> Um, presence of chloroform. Dr. Voss's analysis of the air in the trunk resulted a high level of chloroform. However, it was not proved whether the chloroform was a result of spilling contents into the trunk carpet or if it came from a decomposing body. Insect activity. Um, Megacilia scalaris, diptera, and foridae, some of which thrive on dead bodies, was found but it could also be found on any decaying matter, including garbage that was found in the trunk. Um, the M word is in there and I hate that word. I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> I'd rather read the scientific terminology. Um, cyber evidence uh, was uh, via search warrant. Casey Anthony's laptop was investigated and it was found that there were recent searches for chloroform and self-defense. And those facts were admitted into court um, but the, the, um, they place Casey or Cynthia Anthony performing such searches, so they couldn't, I mean, using that computer, so they couldn't determine who performed those searches. Yeah, so there was that. And then there was also, and this was the evidence that got me and Eric was like, no, was the heart stickers with Kaylee's remains. Um, the forensics expert, FBI forensics expert could not find any, any kind of, ow, any kind of heart sticker, remnants of a sticker, any kind of dried adhesive from a sticker. So he couldn't find anything like that on the duct tape. So the heart stickers and there were also, there was a heart sticker found on the scene and then there were heart stickers found at Casey Anthony's home when they searched it. And they were like, it was the heart stickers, not unlike these, but the heart stickers they showed was of a different shape than the heart sticker found on the scene. Um, like one was kind of like a short and stubby heart and the other one was just like a classic heart. So it, <laughs> It wasn't even the same sticker. You can't say, well, it was a sticker like this because I have heart-shaped stickers. Does that make me a suspect? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they the heart-shaped stickers were thrown out also and I knew they would be. I knew for sure that the, the heart-shaped heart stickers were not going to make it, Ugh. were not going to make it into evidence. Like they weren't gonna have much stay in power. So, but anyway, all of that was circumstantial evidence. And of course it's admissible and it can be used to convict. They've used, they've used lots of um, circumstantial evidence to convict people in the past. Um, but direct evidence is so much better um, and preferred in a death penalty case. Again, I'm not saying they are gonna seek the death penalty on Stephen Stearns, but I feel pretty confident they are once they um, charge him with murder, if he does get charged with it. Uh, ooh, I said the word, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but the thing about circumstantial evidence is it can create reasonable doubt in the minds of the jury um, therefore leading to a not guilty verdict. And most decent defense attorneys can explain away a lot of different circumstantial evidence. They can explain it away. Oh, semen was found on her. Well, that just proves they had a sexual interaction. You know, that doesn't prove, you know, anything that, that, that he, he unalived her. That just means he did that on her. You know what I mean? 
Um, but direct evidence, like physical evidence that directly proves the fact or witness testimony or video evidence of the crime. Um, but enough circumstantial evidence can still lead to a conviction. Um, but it just, it makes me nervous, especially after the whole Casey Anthony thing. It makes me nervous. So the thing with the Casey Anthony thing is despite what we all knew, um, you know, the law is reason, free from passion. And that really applied that day when that verdict came back because justice was served. It just wasn't served the way we wanted it to go. The justice system works. The justice system works exactly the way it's supposed to work. It just sometimes things don't go the way we want them to. But everything went the way, every law was followed, every guideline was followed, uh, the constitution was obeyed. It, it's just, sometimes it just doesn't work out the way we want to. And I don't wanna say justice was served, that's not true, but the justice system worked. It just didn't work the way we wanted to. And whenever the justice system doesn't work the way we wanted to, we're like, the justice system is broken. And I understand that sentiment, but that's not true because if you ever find yourself falsely accused of something, you're gonna want that same justice system that found Casey Anthony not guilty. I promise you that. Um, but anyway, so enough circumstantial evidence can still lead to a conviction, but oh, it, make, it, it makes me feel icky. Um, and again, Stearns is going to get convicted of these current charges. I am confident in that because this is direct evidence they got on him for this stuff because of the description of the penis. It's his, you know, he has a weird penis that matches the description in the um, pictures and the videos and stuff. So they know that's him because I promise you they examined him closely. Um, and I am confident that he's gonna get convicted uh, of those charges um, and we want that we definitely want that that's some justice for Madeline but that only gets partial justice for her and um, and he'll get life off of the capital S assault against her against a child under 12 because in at least eight counts I believe it was eight counts she was under 12 when that happened now again it's still kind of up in the air can he be sentenced to to death for those charges because they occurred prior to that legislation being signed. Um, it's, I keep hearing varying things um, from professionals in the field, but we don't know. They, they, that is, is something that's going to be, our, Florida is known for signing legislation that is unconstitutional. So we'll just see what happens. Um, but still, even if he could get the absolute most brutal punishment for what was found on his phone, we still want him or whoever did it, whoever unalive Madeline, to be punished for that. And whether it was him or somebody else, Jen, whatever, I believe that they will seek the death penalty. It, and, um, you know, for Madeline's unalive. And so, you know, they want to make sure they can nail him or whoever it was good. And um, in that press conference they had, like people say, oh, they didn't even say anything. I think they said a lot. I think they said a lot because they were like, we're gonna find those responsible. So they may feel like there's more than one person involved. I mean, I think a lot of us are pretty sure more than one person is involved in some capacity. Again, my, I think he did it. I think he unalived her, but I think Jennifer or Jen knows something about it. Um, I just don't understand how your daughter could be getting SA'd for all those years under your roof and you not know about it. I just, I mean, I just feel like I, I would know what was going on in my own house. The only difference is I would have put a freaking end to it. Um, yeah, so it's crazy. But I um, was reading some people's theories, and this one is really out there. But I kind of thought, you know, maybe, and maybe this is someone like me who has just watched too many episodes of Special Victims Unit, because this one is really out there. 
but a, a theory of why it happened. At this point, I don't even think it matters. The why doesn't even matter. A 13, a freshly 13 year old girl was murdered after years of being brutally essayed, brutally, because if you read the affidavit describing the um, information that found that they found when they charged him with the, the other um, 60 um, charges, when, you know, they hit him with those other charges. If you read that affidavit, you know what I'm talking about. It, he, oh, it's just, it makes me want to wretch. But anyway, so this is really out there. But this theory was, um, you know, he's probably been communicating with other dirt bags, maybe even sharing material. And maybe, and th again, this is way out there. And I realized that, but maybe someone offered him a lot of money, like a lot of money for um, a, a kitty snuff film. And um, that's, I, I don't even like saying that, okay? Um, and I, again, I know that's crazy, but it's entirely possible. And if that was the case, there's going to be more people, but that opens the door for him to make a deal. Um, I don't know what kind of deal he'd get because he's in big trouble, but... You know, we know he's a monster, and I think he's capable of doing anything. And um, I think that eventually we're going to see something go down with mom. I do. Um, and I, I know people say, let's not accuse the mom yet. But let's, because she lied. She didn't misspeak. She lied several times. And, you know, I know she was interviewed by the police, and... Uh, I just don't think we're done hearing about her involvement in this situation. But anyway, that's it. I just wanted to uh, share my thoughts and some more information with y'all on that matter and just my concerns as far as circumstantial evidence goes. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I work for lawyers. I worked with lawyers for years, but I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm just somebody that is really obsessed with true crime, criminology, things of that nature. And um, it's, I've, studied on it for years. Um, maybe I should have gone to law school, but I don't know. I think I'm too soft. I think I'm too soft for law school. Um, when I went in for <laughs> jury duty, I got as far as, you know, we went to the courtroom where the defendant and his attorneys and then the uh, DA, the prosecuting attorneys were there and they went to each of us and asked us if we thought we would be a, a good juror. And they got to me and they asked me if I thought, if they, I thought I would be acute, acute, if they thought I would be a good, if I thought I would be a good juror. And I went, no, sir. <laughs> and he asked why I said that. And I said, he looks my son's age. So I look at someone like that and I'm like, I'm not going to find him guilty of anything. Look at him. He's an angel. <laughs> I said, he's a sweet, precious angel. <laughs> and they just laughed and I got out of jury duty. So... <laughs> But, um, and he did. He looked like someone that would be friends with Marshall. He didn't look, because it was a, a murder. He didn't look like somebody that, I, I think he did end up getting off because of the, uh, the Florida stand your ground law. Um, but yeah, I just, and I'm like, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not trying to be cute. I'm telling you the truth. I said, I am soft when it comes to people. I am old enough to be their mother. That's not true. I'm not that soft, but like now older bitches that want to be mouthy with me on, on YouTube that, that act like they want to square up. And then I offer them the opportunity to actually square up and then they back down. Now them, I'm not soft with, I am not soft with them because there's a couple bitches on YouTube, not to get off track, but there are a couple bitches on YouTube that I would like to get in the ring with. I'd like to get, not even a ring, a cage. Put me in a cage with some of these bitches. Let me see what comes out of their mouth then when we're in a cage. Mm. Just saying. All right, well, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to everyone later. Bye.